Hello, and welcome to the Washington Civil Rights Association Legislative Commentary. I'm your host, Corey, and today we're going to talk about the overhaul of civil protection orders contained in Senate Bill 5297 and House Bill 1320. These bills overhaul all types of civil protection orders, including domestic violence, sexual assault, stalking, anti-harassment, vulnerable adult, and extreme risk. To be clear, there is no objection to civil protection orders in general. Uh, they, they honestly generally serve a very noble purpose in protecting the vulnerable people in our communities. The purpose of this video is exclusively to discuss changes that impact extreme risk protection orders, or red flag laws. From here out, I'll be referring to these simply as ERPOs. Due to some changes in definitions, someone who you dated in the 8th grade now has the power to file an ERPO with no limitations. Also, the changes in definitions allow for prior roommates who you may not have lived with for decades to also fire, file an ERPO, again, with no limitation. Both of these items are rather concerning to me. You may not have been in contact with these individuals for 20 plus years and reconnect over social media. However, based on a post or a photo that they find to be objectionable, they have the ability to file an ERPO. While constitutionally protected free speech is exempted from the course of conduct definition, it does not mean that the ERPO cannot be filed. It also doesn't mean that a temporary protection order may be issued, removing your firearms and CPL for 14 days until the time of a hearing. If at that hearing you decide you would like the court to grant a continuance because you would like to be able to have legal counsel present, but haven't been able to secure that legal counsel yet, that temporary um, protection order will remain in effect until the next hearing date. It's also worth noting that you will not be appointed legal counsel by the court for this hearing. However, if you do obtain legal counsel on your own, the court may decide to appoint legal counsel for the person who filed that ERPO. Now, if you find yourself facing this mess, the person who filed the ERPO may be found guilty of a gross misdemeanor only if it can be proven that they intended to harass you or if it can be proven that they knowingly filed false information. This doesn't give me much of a warm fuzzy feeling, although I suppose it's better than nothing. For these reasons, I have to strongly, strongly oppose this bill. I am sure there are tons of good things in the bill related to other types of protection orders, but without amendments to place limitations on those who can file and under what circumstances, I, I just can't support it. There also may be other negative things in the bill that are related to ERPOs, but it's, it's been hard to digest as the bill is 356 pages long. I would also really, really like to see an amendment that limits the carte blanche ability of law enforcement agencies to request ERPOs for persons that reside outside their jurisdictions or have not committed an offense inside their jurisdiction um, or, or be able to file ERPOs for things that they are not actively investigating. Um, we've already seen this abused by SPD at the request of the FBI. Um, even if in that particular case I do consider the respondent to be a bad guy, because um, I do, it's about the process um, and the ability to abuse the process that's the issue. There are links below to review the text of the bills yourself and contact your representatives to ask them to oppose these bills. Be sure to stay plugged in with Washington Civil Rights Association by visiting our website, joining the Legislative Action Group on Facebook, and following us on all of our social outlets. Thank you for your time. Have a great day.